Hello, my name is Jay Johnson. And I'm Dr. Richard Hansen. And this is SAM Phase 2 Hard Days. So make sure you've seen all the other videos leading up to this. So SAM Phase 1, Easy Day Hard Day. SAM Phase 2, Easy Day. And then this will lead you into the hard day, which there's a lot going on here. And what we're, we're going to start with are these leg exercises. She's going to be skipping forward for 30 meters. If you're not at the track, you can definitely do this at a trailhead. And I, I think most of you are going to find a parking lot, even if you're at uh, your, your health club. Um, you, you should be able to find 30 meters where you can safe, safely do this exercise. Yeah, and this is an entry-level plyometrics exercise, so it incorporates a lot of different motor control components at the hip, but it also, with the arm swings, you're opening up the diaphragm to get a little bit more stretch on the abdominal fascia. Okay, so folks, here's, here's something that you don't see a lot of runners doing. She is moving right now in the frontal plane, okay? Now, running is something that you do in the sagittal plane, has a little bit of transverse plane movement. But, but Dr. Hansen, is it fair to say that most runners aren't moving in this plane during much of their training? Yeah, and it's kind of one of the key to athleticism. You're working a lot of the glute and hip stabilizers when you move side to side, and that's something you rely on pretty significantly when you start getting fatigued to keep your mechanics in check. Yeah, so she's going down 30 meters and back 30 meters. So, so now that there's a little bit of an aerobic component here too where your heart rate's getting up a little bit. Lateral shuffle, she needed to speed up a little bit here, folks. That pace that she's going at right now is the correct pace. Now make sure you go in both, both directions on this, and that pace right there is good. And keep your lower back flat, and you want to sit a little bit lower than she is with the hips. Now here with the front lunge, you're creating more of a walking lunge. She's not resetting in between. She's swinging the leg through. This is an unstable type of exercise, so you're creating good balance in what's called proprioception by moving forward on one leg versus the other. Wide outs, folks, a lot of you have seen these in warm-ups. Dr. Hans, her hips could be a little lower in this. Yeah, and she could speed up the tempo just a little bit. This, again, is an early plyometric exercise just to get a little blood flow to the tendon. Mountain climbers is a, a great exercise, nice and simple. You're, you're going to look a, a little bit weird doing it out on the track, but this is something that a lot of athletes feel very powerful doing and you know, ju just a, a great uh, general strength exercise. Now, here with the lateral lunge, She's trying to keep her back leg a little bit straighter. You're trying to stretch the inside adductor. So it's one of the inside thigh stabilizers. You want to accentuate that movement. You're opening up the, the, the hip complex by stretching side to side while still activating the glute to initiate the movement. Yeah, folks. Now, here's something, a wave lunge that I've seen Dr. Hansen do with all of his athletes. Why is that so important? Because now you're creating a little bit of rotary movement at the hip capsule while you dip in and out of that lunge. It's kind of like forming a U with your hips. So yes, you're stretching the adductor, you're engaging the glute, but you're also creating a little bit of hip mobility at the same time. Okay, core strength for, for the hard day. So folks, we've always started with core strength up to this point, but now we just did the leg strength. Now we're going into the core strength. Here's the bottom line. A lot of these are, are 25 seconds for the various planks. Folks, you can do this, okay? It, it might take you a month, it might take you six weeks, but if you do SAM easy, phase one, then do SAM phase one hard, then you do SAM phase two easy, you'll be ready for this, which is SAM phase two hard, and you'll be able to do all, all these planks and not have to take any, any rest in, in, in between. So just just trust that, that you, you can build up to having the endurance to, to do this. Now, now, Dr. Hansen, what, what's going on with a, a, a V-sit here? Now, a V-sit is still a core endurance exercise, but you're incorporating a little bit more of the hip flexor activity to keep the legs nice, straight, and stable out in front of you. Try to keep the lower back flat against the ground. You're just engaging the abdominal cavity to also help lift the torso. Here with the Supermans, don't overextend the spine. You do want to get a little bit of lift. And if I were instructing this exercise, I would also have her lift her thumbs to the sky so she gets a little bit of lower trap and lat activity as well. And then back to V-sits, folks. Folks, one, one, one thing I, I think we do a good job of, Dr. Hansen and I, is doing things for your anterior chain and your posterior chain. So this is an anterior chain exercise, but you had just uh, worked on your posterior chain with, with the, the Superman. Okay, so hip strength for the hard days. We're going to do some things you've seen before, the split squat. Yeah, so the split squat is a, uh, it's another plyometric exercise. It gets you used to being on an unstable base, but it allows you to 
to get situated with dropping that knee down for some of the eccentric strength without movement going forward. Now with the side squat, you are moving forward. You're opening up the hip capsule again in that frontal plane. But again, she would want to keep her hips a little bit lower so she can get a little bit more stretch on that hamstring. Good mornings are working the posterior chain, which is so important for runners because, I mean, what would you say, 98% of runners are weak in their posterior chain? Yeah, and this is a great exercise to also stretch out that hamstring while you're moving through the full range of motion. Same with the bird dogs. As you bring that knee up, you're stretching a little bit of the glute and the upper hamstring. Just make sure to keep that pelvis nice and stable. And folks, you're, you're, you're not going to do all these exercises perfectly the first time. I mean, that's, that's why these videos are here. So you can come back to them and, and look at, you, you know, for example, the, the reverse clam is something that will probably be easy to do correctly the very first time. But the reverse air clam, you, you might not have your, your knee relative to your hip in, in, in the right spot. And with all of these hip strength exercises, they're trying to engage the glute and the lateral hip stabilizers. So make that a focus when you are initiating the movement to make sure that that glute is, is engaged before you start. Yeah, so folks, now what we're going to end with is hip mobility. And you, you, you've, you've seen all, all, the, all, these, all these before. We're really trying to get that hip capsule moving. And one, one thing you mentioned, Dr. Hansen, in a previous video is that these things feel good after a workout. Yeah, there's, there's the concept of ramping up the nervous system and ramping down the nervous system pre and post workout. And these are examples of things that can help warm up the nervous system before you're about to run. It can also help calm down the nervous system after you've done a lot of different strength exercises. Folks, you, you are going to look weird at the trailhead doing things like knee circles forward, knee circles backwards, but you have to trust that the chance of you getting injured goes way down if you do all this work. Yeah, bottom line is if you can build some basis, basic athleticism, you can make your structure pretty resilient to tolerate the demands of the running, both in volume and intensity that you're imposing on it. Yeah, folks, and, and here, here's an example too where, where you maybe need to watch the video with the lower body crawl just to make sure the knee uh, gets, gets to the, the hip level. I, I think she does a great job here keeping her upper body quiet, um, doing all the, the movement at the hips and with the lower body. Yeah, and same thing here. She does a good job of not overextending the spine, just letting the legs and the arms kind of dictate the motion because just by activating the arms and legs, you're engaging the lower back muscles. And then, so we did something for the posterior chain just then. Now we're coming back to the iron cross and it's a little bit of anterior chain. But the, the, the bottom line, folks, is that you're also, from a heart rate standpoint, you're just, you're just bringing your heart rate down with all these exercises. Yeah, and the groiners, you have to keep in mind, if you've had previous hip impingement or hip issues, just let the motion kind of dictate how far you're able to go. Don't try to force it across your body. Folks, thanks for watching. We really appreciate you and your attention, and we're going to try and help you stay injury-free.